वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स नाउ लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद आर लेसन एंड फिनिश द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक द लास्ट टॉपिक ऑफ द चैप्टर इज फर्टिलाइजेशन आफ्टर पॉलिनेशन द नेक्स्ट प्रोसेस विल बी फर्टिलाइजेशन एंड यू ऑल नो दैट फर्टिलाइजेशन इज द यूनियन और द फ्यूजन ऑफ द मेल एंड फीमेल गेमीट्स सो नाउ यू नो दैट एंथर्स प्रोड्यूस पोलन ग्रेन्स एंड इन साइड द ओवरी ovules are born and you also know that the pollen grains are the male gametes and the ovules are the female gametes now before that before studying fertilization let us study the structure of pollen grains pollen grain suppose this is one pollen grain highly enlarged as you know that these are microscopic pollen grain is a cell which is double walled the inner wall is called intime and the outer wall is thick and it is called axine in tine and axine okay and inside there is the protoplasm the protoplasm it gets arranged in two nuclei one is round nucleus we call it tube nucleus tube nucleus and the other one is little bit uh, irregular and we call it uh, somewhat this shape we call it generative nucleus generative nucleus so at this stage the pollen grains when they are liberated in the air or when they are means uh, ready for the pollination the pollen grain is already in this stage it has two walls in tine and axine and inside there are two nuclei tube nucleus and generative nucleus and there is an opening over here we call it germ pore from which the pollen tube will come out so just you can refer your book and you can see the diagram you need to study this diagram also because they can ask you to look uh, label or to draw so this is one pollen grain inner wall in tine and outer wall axine and these are the two nuclei tube nucleus and generative nucleus and this is the germ pore from where the where the pollen grain extends its pollen tube fine so this is the structure of the pollen grain at the time of pollination when it lands on the stigma it is like this now let us little bit study the structure of ovule now you know that ovary has ovules it may be one two three many according to the uh, according to the plant it varies so if the ovary has one ovule it will form one seed and if it is it has multi ovules then it will form many seeds you know the fruits which contain some fruits have only one seed some have many seeds now suppose this is the ovule inside the ovary ovule ovule also has two protective layers we call them integuments now suppose this is one integument and this is the another integument okay the protective layers of ovule are called integuments and at one end these integuments are open we call you have learned last year also this is called the opening is called of the ovule is called micropyle micropyle fine now inside the ovule there is egg sac embryo sac this is the embryo sac this whole structure is ovule these are the two protective layers we call them integuments and this i have drawn the embryo sac inside the embryo sac this embryo sac is surrounded by a nutritive tissue nutritive tissue we call nucellus nucellus which provides nourishment it is uh, made up of proto sorry parenchymatous cells which provide nourishment during the fertilization and all the process which goes on now inside the embryo sac the protoplast is arranged in seven cells seven cells are present inside the ovule these seven cells are arranged in such a way that three are here three cells here you have to draw like this these in out of these three this center one is called egg cell this is basically the female gamete egg cell and these two surrounding cells are called synergids synergids or help cells 
okay and at the opposite end also there are three cells we call them antipodial cells these are antipodial cells and this large inside this is one central cell so how many cells are there seven cells three at this end synergids and egg cell three at the opposite end we call them antipodial cells and center cell which is called one central cell it is one cell but it contains two nuclei and they are somewhat together held by some protoplasm and they are together we call them polar nuclei these are polar nuclei okay so we can say inside the ovule there is embryo sac and in the embryo sac there are seven cells but eight nucleus because 1 2 3 4 5 6 seventh cell is this one and these two nuclei if we count them then it will be eight nuclei fine and they are surrounded by a nucellus which is the which provides the nourishment nutritive tissue and then it is further surrounded by two integuments the opening of the integument is micropyle from this micropyle the pollen tube will make its way and fuse so these were the structure of the pollen grain and the ovule now you can refer your book and study the structure of ovule this diagram can also come in your exams so see as i told you these are the integuments this is the nucellus the nutritive tissue shown with yellow color now this is the embryo sac inside and these are the three uh, these are the two synergids and the central egg cell this is the central cell and these three are called antipodial cells and inside there are two polar nuclei fine now let us move further and study the process of fertilization now for the process of fertilization let us draw the uh, structure of gynoecium in little more detail this is the suppose stigma we will make it broad and this is the style stigma style and the ovary now what is inside the ovary ovule so this is your ovule now suppose the pollen grain has landed on this ovule and it has start producing the pollen tube so we have studied that pollen grain has two polar nuclei two sorry two nuclei one is tube nucleus and one is generative nucleus now this pollen tube makes its way all through the style and its way is guided by it pro it also produces some kind of enzymes hydrolytic enzymes which can dissolve the uh, wall of the stigma and still uh, style and pierces inside and on the way it utilizes the nourishment of style itself and then from the micropylar end this pollen tube will make its way and make its entry in the embryo sac inside the ovule okay now on the way you have studied that pollen grain possesses two i told you two nucleus at this stage it was at two nucleus one is called tube nucleus the other one is generative nucleus tube nucleus guides the way it comes out first and it makes way and guides the way all through and this is the generative nucleus and after it makes way, uh, its way tube nucleus disintegrates as it is about to enter on the way tube nucleus will disintegrate and generative nucleus divides into two male nuclei two nuclei one and two nuclei which will fuse inside the embryo sac generative nucleus divides into two we call them male nuclei okay they are uh, held together by a common protoplasm cytoplasm is common there is no cell wall in between fine then when they make way one of the male nuclei fuses with this egg cell with this egg cell and it forms egg cell plus male nucleus male nuclei and this will form zygote zygote diploid which is now double diploid you have not studied this but this much is enough for you 
then the other male nuclei will make its way and fuse with this these two polar nuclei these two polar nuclei already present in the embryo sac and the third one male nuclei will fuse with it and now it will become triploid because now it has become three nucleus triploid nuclei two polar nuclei and one of the male nuclei so out of the two male nuclei what happens one will fuse with the egg cell resulting in the formation of zygote the other one will fuse with the polar nuclei two polar nuclei resulting in triploid nucleus okay so there are two fertilization that is why in angiosperms in flowering plants we say that there is double fertilization one of the male nuclei fuses with egg cell to produce the zygote and the other male nuclei produces with the polar nuclei to form the triploid structure so now you can study from here see the embryo sac contains 7 3 3 1 cells three cells at the micropylar end one egg cell and two synergets three cells at the opposite end called antipodial cells one large central cell and the central cell contains two nuclei called polar nuclei fused together these two okay so germination of pollen grain pollen grain germinates only if it falls on the stigma of the same plant species very important if the pollen grain lands on another species then it will fail to germinate it will disintegrate or you can say it will perish but only it will uh, it will only produce pollen tube it it lands on the plant of same species the pollen grain on falling on the stigma is stimulated to germinate due to the secretion of the sugars by the stigma through a point in the axine a pollen tube grows out of the pollen grain carrying at its tip the generative nucleus and the tube nucleus generative nucleus divides into two sperm nuclei we call them two male gamete nuclei thus in a germinating pollen grain there are three nuclei which are not separated by cell walls they share a common cytoplasm they mean to say that when the pollen grain produces the pollen tube it already had two nucleus one tube and one generative so on the way generative will divide in and produce two male nuclei so there may be three nucleus tube nucleus and two male nuclei but before it enters in the embryo sac this tube nucleus will disintegrate okay then the pollen tube grows through the stigma and style by dissolving the tissues with the help of enzymes and reaches the ovary there it pushes through the micropyle and reaches the embryo sac the tube nucleus which had directed the growth of pollen tube all the way down now disintegrates so tube nucleus as i told you will disintegrate now the pollen tube enters one of the synergets and releases the two sperm nuclei out of which one sperm nucleus will fuse with the egg cell to form zygote while the other sperm nucleus will move towards the two polar nuclei and one will fuse with this to form the zygote the other nuclei will fuse with this to form a uh, three nuclei that is triple fusion and this forms endosperm you will study in next chapter so all together there are two fertilizations and this whole process is called double fertilization so double fertilization means one sperm nucleus fuses with egg cell nucleus and the other sperm nucleus fuses with the two polar nuclei of the central cell that is why we say that in angiosperms in flowering cells there is double fertilization now this you can study yourself fate of the floral parts after fertilization you just need to give a reading what happens to all the other floral parts petal stamen style stigma they will wither off they will shed off in some plants calyx remains attached like you must have seen the fruit is also formed seeds are formed but the uh, calyx remains attached to the uh, the this fruit and sometimes calyx or the sepals they they wither the ovary forms the fruit and the ovule forms the seeds so you can study here ovary forms fruits ovary wall will form the wall of the fruit it is called pericarp ovule forms the seed placenta will form the stalk of the seed 
outer and inner integuments the integuments of the ovule will form the seed coat and secondary nucleus which is the triploid that will form endosperm egg cell synergids they have formed embryo antipodial cells will disorganize or you can say they will perish they only help in making the fertilization possible or you can say they help in process of fertilization fine so dear students please revise the topic thoroughly also the diagrams very carefully study it it will take some time for you to understand you need to read at least two times and then you can go through the questions so in the next video i will discuss the question answers with you thank you very much may god bless you